On today's episode, Missy and I are talking about perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. And Missy and I join you to talk about life tips on ways that we can live daily uh, toward our inner peace and happiness. And today we're going to be talking about perspective, what perspective means and how we keep a perspective on what's going on in life right now and you know, what we can do to maybe change that perspective if, if need be. Absolutely. So, no How are things going for you? Things are uh, going pretty good. Uh, we're still living under certain regulations for this wonderful uh, COVID that's still with us. So there's still a lot going on with that. And, uh, but I, I think we're, coping with and living in this new normal. How about with you? Well, we're finally in our new house. I don't know if you're watching this on YouTube. You can see the background has changed a little bit. It's still kind of still the same color paint, but um, super excited. We, uh, mm-hmm. we, it's been a, a very overwhelming and long process, but we are in and we are super excited. So there's still boxes in the background, but uh, we're getting there. So I feel really good about that. Awesome. And- now, the, you know, I think newness brings with it that uh, excitement and uh, challenge. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm grateful. I'm super grateful that we're here because even though we've had some, you know, ups and downs along the road, it's like, it, it, it's worth it. It was totally worth the whole trip because we learned so much. We learned patience. We learned understanding. Um, and we learned how good we are as a team together. So it, it's been nice. pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes that, that can bring out the worst in people instead of the best in people. So I, I will tell you, we learned we both hate couch shopping. So <laughs> <laughs> he's like, no, nope, not, not this one, not, not this one. And he's just like, I love you. Thank you, God, for picking a couch, finally. <laughs> but yeah, he's got, he's got a lot of patience. <laughs> well, I, I can't even imagine. I've, uh, in my life, I have moved off in but i've never had to pack an entire house oh yeah so i don't know what that's like i don't know if i want to know what that's like (laughs) it really wasn't that bad i mean i don't feel like like honestly i kind of like i said i did it over a six month process so he would go babe where's the banana holder and i'd go i packed it (laughs) what what do we need to keep (laughs) the banana holder out for we're moving so it can be gone for six months so, um, yeah, I'm sure he found that interesting, but, uh, yeah, I didn't want to feel rushed. I didn't want to feel around like, for six months. Yeah. I didn't, I just didn't want to feel like pressured to get it all done so fast. Come on girls. Yeah. And, and that's probably the key. You know, if, if you have that ability to pre-plan it, you know, do it at a workable pace so that you're not overdoing it and over stressing and, yeah, absolutely. And I love it because it's, it's like uh, you really can get analysis paralysis is where you're like, oh my gosh, there's just so much to do. I don't know what to do. I'm not going to do anything. And um, definitely uh, just by kind of doing a little bit at a time and what's the next logical step and following through that way really can change the perspective of, of how you're working through something, whether, whatever the circumstances. Nice way to weave in the topic. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I was thinking the same thing, actually. So yeah, that, that we, really we got it like that. Perspective. <laughs> we do. We got it like that. We, we're vibing. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, well I, I think you know it's just that's always on the, on the top of my mind because uh, I've been using that as the basis of, 
what helped me in life and and whenever I teach any of my college classes or in most of my writings, I'm always throwing in a section on perspective because yeah. I, I think it really makes the big difference in life. And many of us just seem to gloss over that. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and, and taking the time to celebrate when you're, you know, your perspective is one way versus another, because sometimes we've spent so much time in, in, in a dark perspective, right? I mean, you know, for years, I think it took me a long time to recognize like, where am I? And what am I really, how am I looking at the situation? And I would see finally that I was in a victim mentality or I wasn't being accountable for my own, own actions and my own thoughts. And so in moving forward in growth, I was able to question, you know, what is this for? How can I learn from it? And, and it's changed the way that I look at things because now I know it's a gift. I know no matter what happens, if, if the closing gets pushed off, well, there must have been some reason. And I'm telling you, like, my closing got pushed back 30, it was, it was 45 days to begin with. They got pushed back to 60 days for a circumstance that, you know, wasn't related to myself. But I was like, okay, well, no big deal. Well, now the interest rates have dropped and I'm at, you know, a 3% interest rate and locked in. Oh, okay. Thank you for saving me money. You know, like I know that there's good in what happens. I know that when I'm focused on where I want to be and I continue to focus there, then it just always comes together. I don't know how, and, and I don't always get to say how it unfolds, but at the same time, trusting the process has been a huge lesson. Awesome. And, and I would totally agree with that. You know, it, it's, I think people forget to look at the thing of, of perspective because a lot of times, you know, and I used to catch myself doing this and a lot of my clients will do this, that, you know, they'll say, well, the way I think is my reality. What you're really saying is the way that I perceive my perception is my reality. Right. And I like to make that distinction because if you just say, well, that's just the way it is that kind of takes away our ability to interact with that. Yeah. If that is just the way it is, well, then there, there's not a thing I could do about it. And then that can bring on its own stressors and negativity. But if we look at it and say, well, this is my perspective, which is my reality. Yeah. Then I can change my perspective. See, I'm not stuck with saying, well, this is what the world has given me. So I'm stuck. Well, and that, that seems almost like hopelessness at the same time, you know, like this, it is what it is. Well, it's hopeless. It's useless. I can't change it. And, and I understand the, the, the mentality of, um, the best way to put, it, I think is, uh, you know, you're, you're going to be in that situation. So you get to deal with it. You get to do what you do. But, um, one of my teachers has taught me it's not ready ready aim fire it's ready fire aim because the course is always changing and so if you're constantly focused on the goal and what you want to accomplish then it doesn't matter where the course goes you're always aiming for what you want you see i'm talking with my hands a lot but um you, you know and and then you don't feel hopeless you know you right. you don't have the more like the I don't I don't care attitude is is what I get from the it is what it is sometimes and that's my perspective right you know so my perspective is that we get to do something about it okay something new we get to create around something new we get to be patient over something better is coming along and you know and you know maybe it's a Pollyanna attitude I mean I've been told that before like okay you know but at the same time it helps you to get through. Like, I, I will tell you that I have a five second pity party and then I'm like, oh, nope, not going there. And let the thought go. And I, I train my people to, to think of it like a wisp of smoke or, you know, like a balloon mm -hmm. floating off into the, you know, it's just a thought. You are not your thoughts. You don't have to, you know, take it to dinner, invite it to live with you. You know, you, you get to just go, oh yeah, peace out. That was cool, bye. Because yep. it's trying to teach you something. Well, and, and that's, you know, I think what 
trips up a lot of us is that we believe our thoughts. Yeah. You know, and, and that's part of what makes our perspective is, you know, how I believe uh, my thoughts helps me to see how things are on, on the outside and that becomes my reality. But one of the things that I, I share with my clients is, you know, why are we believing all of our thoughts? And a lot of times they'll say, well, because it's our thought. Well, one is we have to remember that we're the creators of our thought. Yeah. So if we can create our thought, that means we can change our thought. We can delete our thought. But the other piece that I look at it as, so it's my thought. And I'm going to say, you know, well, I'm ugly. That's my thought. So I must be ugly. But then I think back, you know, when I was a kid, I used to think I was like Superman or Spider-Man. Yeah. That was my thought. I was Wonder Woman. <laughs> there you go. You know, and, and at least for me in Superman or Spider-Man, that thought was not a true reality. Yeah. I know. So, I broke you know, a few I mean, uh, ankles uh, jumping off of wood piles. <laughs> so you're right. You're right. <laughs> yep. I, I could never fly. No. Nope. Uh, I'm glad you didn't try to get in a line of any bullets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, couldn't fly, but that was my thought. And, you know, when I think about that thought now, I can say, well, that's just not realistic. Yeah. But why, if I have the, the thought, I'm ugly, why, why do I jump at that and go, oh, man, I'm so ugly, and then let that take me down? Yeah. Why all of a sudden is that thought true? Yeah. So... You know, I, I think we need to, to really look at our thoughts in that way. Well, most of the things that we actually think and believe we created when we were very young, when, it, you know, we were, me we're meaning making machines always. But when we were very young, you know, okay, so I wanted a doll. I asked my dad for a doll. It was my birthday. My dad didn't give me a doll. I must be unworthy. I must be unlovable. You know, and now you, you've grown years and years later and you're thinking things like that that just aren't serving you, right? And, and it's just a story. And the, the thing is that a lot of people, a lot of humans think that they are that story. Well, if I change the story, then who am I, right? And, and, and then we lose, we feel like we're gonna lose ourselves. We're scared of losing what we think we're supposed to be. Um, and it just, it just doesn't have to be that way. Like, you know, it's a little bit at a time. It's tiny shifts. It's, it's what one of my first coaches used to call uh, the purple bunny conundrum, right? If we try to force this thought out of our head of purple bunnies, well, now we're thinking mm -hmm. of purple bunnies and, and those purple bunnies are fuzzy and they're cute and, and like, get them out. We don't want to talk about purple bunnies anymore, but you can't stop you know? So yep. it's, it's, it's allowing that thought to pass through. It's allowing it to just, just transfer, you know, it's, it's energy. And if it's not energy you want to create in your space and your life, then you get to just let it go. Yeah. You know, and, and when we look at this in the way of perspective, it's important then to realize that, you know, we can always look at whatever is going on from a different viewpoint, mm -hmm. you know? So like when you say, you know, we learned many of the ways that we think about ourselves from when we were younger and we reinforced it. And then when people say, well, if I change, you know, then I won't know who I am, you know, I won't be the same. Usually I look at my clients and say, but I thought that was the point. Yeah. You, you know, don't you, like you where you're at like right, now. right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you're telling me I don't like who I am. So then I'm saying change your perspective and it's like, oh, well, I'll lose myself and I won't know who I am. Yeah. Isn't that the perspective conundrum we were talking about yeah. that you wanted to change? Yeah. So you're right. We might lose who we are as far as the who we were. But who am I becoming? And if we want to continue to grow and... um you know, improve ourselves, we will become different. Absolutely. Continuous aim, right? You know, and, and of course, I, I, I say this a lot, but it, it's a muscle. 
You know, if we're constantly working out the muscle of, of, you know, telling that same story over and over again, then that muscle is going to be buff, man. It's going to be strong. But once you start to, you know, work out the puny muscle a little bit more and a little bit more, then this one gets weak and this one gets strong, you know, and, and it does, it really just changes your entire outlook on life, you know, and, yep. um, it gives you that sense of peace that we're after in, in talking about what we're talking about, like the ability to just be like, what could possibly be different about what I'm thinking? What could, what could possibly change if, if I thought about this differently, you know, and just really being in the question of, are you open to new possibilities of seeing things differently? Right. And, and that's the important thing is, you know, when people say, I, I want to change or I want to be different, are you really prepared for that? Yeah. Because you could lose your old self and become a new self. Right. But that's not a bad thing. Again, if we change perspective, we can look at that perspective from, okay, yeah, you lose something and therefore it's a negative. Or we can look at it and say, but you're going to gain something new. And that could be a positive. Yeah. And but again, it, it's all in how we want to look at perspective and look at life. Right. And we can't try, you know, because it's, it's a decision. When you're trying, there, there is no deciding. There's, I mean, there, when you're, you're just not doing it. Yep. You know, I, I, wrote in a, a recent article that, you know, when we look at um, our thoughts and we can say that we're our own worst enemy, you know, a lot of people will use that phrase and then say, well, see how negative that is. Well, it can be negative, but my take on that is that we shift the perspective. If I'm my worst enemy, then isn't it possible that I could also become my best friend? Yes, I love it. That you was know, one... so that shift in perspective. Yeah, we can look that, at it different. That was one of the, the, the first lessons that I think that, uh, you know, really, really hit me hard when, I, when it came into transformation is because I do everything nice for everybody. I'm kind, I compliment, you know, I'm loving, I'm forgiving. I'm, I do all of the things that I feel like anybody would want a friend or, or a family member to do, but I didn't do it for me. You know, so there was a definite struggle for self-love in, uh, in, um, in my book, actually, The Phoenix Program. Um, in the very last chapter, I wrote a poem that just describes, you know, like I was in the ring constantly with myself. I was beating myself up over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it was like, one day it was just like, wait a minute. I, I believe it was the untethered soul where he says, if your internal voice was an external person, how long would you hang out with that person? And I was like, um, yeah, I had a, a few expletives for that person that I won't mention here, but I was like, girl, you got to go. And um, so I started to ignore the shitty committee and, and started to compliment myself and celebrate myself. And yeah, I even did affirmations until the affirmations didn't need to be uh, faked. You know what I mean? Like I said them because they didn't feel right initially it didn't feel comfortable but then as i said them more and more it was like oh wait i i am beautiful i am worthy i am loving i am caring you know i am all those things and i didn't need affirmations anymore because then i just knew i built the muscle up mm -hmm. you know so um but i love that you said that because i think that there's so many people who are looking on the outside of themselves for love companionship and all those things but they don't recognize that it starts with you yeah. And, and again, I, I think that's the key with the perspective, you know, and one of the quotes that I came across and this has been attributed to a lot of different authors. So I really don't know who actually said it, um, but it's the uh, quote that says, we do not see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. Oh, that is so good. Yeah, I love That's that. That's awesome. Yeah. And what I first 
found it. I can't remember where I found it. And like I say, it's been attributed to many different uh, people, but it's, it's really saying that, yeah, if, if you don't feel good about yourself, that's going to color the world around you. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so how, how could I have such low self-esteem, self-respect, self-love, and then look out at the world and say, Oh, it's a beautiful place. Right. Yeah, right. Of course I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And, and it will reflect us, you know, and I know mm-hmm. we've, we've had this conversation before, but, but I have to say that every circumstance is a lesson, right? Everything that you encounter is a lesson. And, you know, if it really boils down to the metaphysical, there is no you, there's only me. So in the things that I witness in the world, if I spot it, I got it. You know, if I'm like, oh, that guy's mean. Well, I must be being mean somewhere. So I get to clean that up. I get to fix it because I mm-hmm. couldn't have people like that in my space if I wasn't first that myself. Right. You know? And what I loved with, with that quote too is that it gives me then hope because if I am only seeing the negative in the world, then that must mean there's a lot of negative in me, which then means I can change that. Yeah. You know, I can't change the world. You know, when we talk about this virus and, and all the other stuff that's going on in society right now, yeah, I, I don't have the ability to, to change any of that, not me myself, but I can change my interior. And when that interior changes, then I'm going to be able to see all of this stuff on the outside from a whole different perspective. Well, what if, and I say this in, in perspective, what if in healing yourself based on what you're perceiving, you're healing the rest of us because we're all connected, Ooh. you know? So that's now, the now way that I see philosophy and yeah. metaphysical. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The <laughs> metaphysical, because that's the way I see it. The greater good for me to do the things that I'm doing, the work that I, I get to do in this life and healing the self-love. I know I'm healing it for you, for all of our listeners, for my family, for my children. I know that they're coming a step up because I get to figure out and I'm figuring out more and more each day how to grow and how to, how to heal the things that I've had to deal with doing karma, the law of mentalism and things like that, you know, and, and, and the ripple effect is real. Like to me, we have no idea how many listeners that we actually have and whose lives we're touching and the ability that we have to just open up and share our hearts and, and have that little change for them. That little change in perspective could give them Mm -hmm. a whole new meaning of life. You know, I, I, quick, quick story to share. Um, at one point in my life, I was suicidal and I prayed. I was like, God, please help me, help me, help me. What am I going to do? I'm so miserable. Like I was just in a very dark place. And all of a Mm -hmm. sudden I get a phone call from a gentleman. I used to be an ordained minister and um, this gentleman reaching out to me on social media and I kept blowing him off. Like, I don't know what you want. Stop bothering me. (laughs) Well, he, I finally responded and he, he said to me that he was thinking of you know, taking his life. And I'm going to tell you that I picked up the phone immediately and I spoke life into this gentleman for three hours. And even though it was three hours, like the life, it was life changing, not only for him, but for me as well. And that was the perspective shift I needed. It was the prayer answered for me, you know, even though, I mean, thankfully I feel like I've done something for him as well. That's, you know, sounds a little selfish, but at the same time, he was exactly what I needed. And that, that's the, you know, gratefulness that I have from that moment. I know that was a little dark, but like, that's how, how effective that I feel like the universe is. When you ask, you're getting an answer. It might not come in the form that you want it to, but you're always going to get the answer. Yeah. And, you know, in a perspective shift, I don't think that was dark at all. Okay, well, good. (laughs) Because, well, just for my own, you know. I don't feel, you know, but at the same time, you know, I don't want to darken the mood here. (laughs) No, and and I appreciate the sharing in in that, you know, you look then at that other perspective and say two lives were spared. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and that's a good thing because, like you say, 
how many lives now has that person touched? Yes. And how many lives have you touched? So all of that occurs because of that one incident. Yeah. So I don't see that as, you know, dark at all. Had the outcome been different, yeah. totally sad and dark story. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, the, this really is all about, you know, when I can change me, then I'm going to view the world different and therefore I'm going to act different. Yeah. You know, um, St. Francis of Assisi, one of my favorite people, um, in his famous prayer says, it is in giving that we receive. Amen. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's not the other way around. You know, it's like yeah. we get all this stuff and then you give some of it. No, it, it's in giving that, that we receive. You yeah. know, and, and we become changed. Because they're one and the same. You know, and, and I, always, uh, I always go back to you, you teach most what you need to know. You know, and so whenever I have a client or a friend or a family member, anybody that comes to me asking, you know, hey, can you help shift my perspective? I always tell them it's a gift for me. Like, please call me anytime, really, because it's not just for you. It's for me as well. And yep. and it's it's the ability to 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 look at that situation and learn as you're you're just letting the love flow through basically is the best way I can describe it, you know, and uh, it really does. It shifts your perspective when you know that, that that's what you have to look forward to and, and how you can help heal yourself at the same time as healing others. Mm -hmm. And, and I am convinced that, and, and I'm not saying this in a naive way or a Pollyanna type way, but I think every situation can be viewed from a different angle yeah. and that, a positive can be found in, in everything. Can can you just be a little Some Pollyanna we have to for me? Deeper. Just a little, little maybe Pollyanna maybe for me. Maybe okay, maybe. little for, just for me because I'll I'll be Pollyanna all day. But <laughs> I need somebody to do it with me, Chris. <laughs> no. Well, Pollyanna story if you want one. I, I used to because again, changing perspective yeah. when I was working with high school kids and there were times I had to take them out on, on these uh, overnight retreats and I'd be filling a school bus after school with 30 some, you know, teenagers. You're after working. Man. <laughs> yeah. So when you think perspective, you know, I've been working all day with teenagers. Now I'm throwing 30 some of them onto a bus after school that I'm going to spend a, a whole other day and evening with. Um, so shift in perspective, let's have a little fun with this. Yeah. So as they're struggling to get on the bus, I would just make the statement that we have to get on the bus as soon as possible because the wheels on this bus go round and round. want to go round and round <laughs> and they can't. <laughs> I would say that over and over until someone would look at me and say, now that's stuck in my head. <laughs> and then I would think, uh -huh. mission accomplished. Yeah, there you go. That's great. I love that. It's such a dad joke, though, I have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we have to have our fun, okay? We have to. Well, and, and, you know, in my mind, I could have just looked at that as the drudgery of, you know, come on, guys, get on this bus yeah, and yeah, yeah. get upset and... Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah, let's have some fun with this. Yeah. Um, but again, now the kids who got that, you know they said something to somebody else on that bus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. if it was in a way of mocking me. Can you imagine what he just said? You know, blah. <laughs> but, you know, even if it was mocking me, they started laughing. And yeah. I don't care if it was at me. Yeah. They were now having a good time. Yeah, that's it. You lighten the lighten the uh, the the space. You you made sure that they were having a good time, and they you set the standard for them. So I think that's wonderful. Although I always followed in my car, and I turned on the radio very quickly because <laughs> I needed that song out of my head as quick as I could. <laughs> yeah, I can see how that gets stuck. Trust me, I have meet 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 so many times. <laughs> you know, ah, that's great. And for listeners who have it stuck in your head, well. <laughs> change perspective somehow <laughs> <laughs> that's great i love it
subliminal oh. messaging at its best. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, so what about the listener challenge this week? What yeah, do you think? we haven't done a listener challenge yet. I, I think that, uh, you know, take some. Something that you're really, really like struggling with and ask how there could be a different possibility of how you can look at it, you know, and, and make that, make that your own personal challenge, you know, or, and practice being your own best friend for a week. Ooh. Because that's a, that could be a double dipper for you, but I'm telling you, like the, one of the best lessons in my life I've learned is to be kind to myself. And uh, it really does. It just shifts the entire perspective of life. Yep. Yeah. And, and we tend to forget that, you know, we, we tend to be more patient and comforting with others than we are with ourselves. Yeah. And, and that's not right. Well, because we, we, we should be with ourselves the way we are with others. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good. I like that. I'm just going to not say what I was going to say because <laughs> no, it was just because it's like when we try to predict the outcome, we suffer. Right. And so we think we should be further along. We compare ourselves to others. That perspective needs to die. Like it just needs to go away because you know, we're not here to suffer. We're here to have fun. We're here to experience joy and laughter and, and, uh, and be light and at peace, you know, and that's the practice. Yep. Yep. So. I, I totally agree. And, and if you need to do some subliminal songs in people's heads, then yeah. <laughs> it's always a blast it's to do that. <laughs> it, it, it's sad right now that Disney is closed because, you know, that that wonderful ride, it's a small world. Oh no. <laughs> after all. <laughs> after all, it is a small world after all. <laughs> yeah, that So for all the listeners who are now angry at me for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely is a, it sticks in your head, that one for sure. <laughs> but well, I think that uh, I was pretty good this week on perspective. Yeah. So I, I think it's, it's just important that we uh, remember that we can change, you know, yeah. the perspective. We can change how we look at things and we're, we're not stuck with our thoughts or our feelings, but we can change them. Well, and it's always nice, I have to say, as one final thought is, it's always nice to have somebody who has a little bit different perspective than you do you know, because yes. it gives you good conversation. It allows you to open up to new possibilities and, and you can be comfortable sharing yourself with other people that way uh, so that you can see a newer and different way. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And we need more of that in today's world. I think. I think so too. Yeah. Well, on that right. note, thank you guys so much for listening. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, and uh, we look forward to seeing what you give us on the Listener Challenge and send that to our social medias or emails. Um, that's on our websites, uh, so just click below for our websites. And uh, don't forget about Patreon. If you really like us, then try to support us and um, definitely tell your friends all about our conversations. All right. Thanks so, so much. Enjoy for your new house, Missy. Thank you. All right. We'll talk to you soon. All right.